Hey guys, what's up? Vicious here. Uh, today I'm going to be giving you a product review of the Razer Orochi, which is Razer's uh, ultra portable Bluetooth gaming mouse. Uh, so this this is a fairly popular product. There's not any shortage of reviews out there on the internet, so you can find many in-depth reviews without any problems. Uh, so just to make mine uh, a little bit more unique than the rest, what I'm really going to be doing is just focusing on the things that you would want to know about this product before you buy it or the things that you wish you knew beforehand if you've already bought it and that would be basically the things that determine whether or not you would enjoy this mouse or whether it's right for what you want to use it for so let's break it down into the most important characteristics and aspects of the mouse and you can decide for yourself after the review if it's something you would like or not so first of all let's talk about the game breaking uh, things the mouse itself, you can tell, is very small. It's only uh, about a little bit more than half the size of a full-size mouse. Here's the Logitech G7, which is a full-size, and here is the Orochi. So that size is obviously going to determine how your hand fits the mouse. And uh, really what it comes down to is grip choice. Uh, in the world of mouse using, there's like two main grips that are predominant over the rest. You have people that are called palmers, who they hold their mouse by putting their palm on it and moving their entire hand with the mouse. And then you have people who are what we call claw grip, where they just grab the mouse with their fingers and kind of hover over it. And you can move your arm or your fingers. Uh, if you're the first, if you're a palmer, uh, the Orochi is already not going to be right for you because it will not fit your grip. If you try to palm this mouse, you're not going to get to do so because your palm does not even touch the mouse. It's way too small. And if you use the claw grip though, it's actually pretty comfortable and it might take some time to get used to it at first, but once you've gotten accustomed to it, it works pretty well. So that's the size. Uh, the next thing is if you were looking for a high performance wireless mouse, then the Eroji is not for you. And that's because it's actually not a high performance wireless mouse. It is a high performance wired mouse uh, that has a wireless option. Uh, some wireless mice that are high performance would be like the G7, uh, the newer model of it, the G700, and Razer makes one called the Mamba, which is a high performance wireless mouse. And what I mean by that is this mouse actually is dual function. It comes, you can use Bluetooth wireless mode or it could be used wired with USB and when you're using it in that Bluetooth mode uh, the specs of it are not very high performance at all. Uh, I'm going to pull up the Razer page here. In the wireless mode it only has 2000 DPI which is actually still pretty good. 125 Hertz pulling uh, and an 8 millisecond response time. For those who are competitive gamers and stuff that's not up to par for you guys. Uh, now in wired mode however it goes up to 4000 DPI which is overkill and it has 1000 hertz polling and one millisecond response time so that's when this becomes a great gaming mouse is when you have it wired but like I said that is not a high performance wireless mouse that is a high performance wired mouse and it's up to you or not to decide whether that's okay with you to have to plug a cable into it uh, to use it at that state so here's the box um, it has the manual stuff inside of it I'm not really going to go over the unboxing, there's unboxing videos already you're going to throw that in the trash, you're going to keep the mouse and you're going to keep the carrying case and inside of the carrying case is a divider so that you can put the mouse on one side and the USB cable on the other side so here's the USB cable that plugs into the mouse and it does so by going under the scroll wheel and into the front when it's plugged into USB it does not use the battery power of the mouse it will use your USB power instead and you have to have it plugged into USB mode to use the software on the computer so you can configure your profiles and your button settings and also um, to update the firmware. So that's what I'll move on to next. Uh, the most predominant complaint with Bluetooth mice is the sleep issue. It means that if you leave the mouse sitting for a few moments it goes into a low power state which we call a sleep state and um, when you go to use the mouse again, you have to wait a few seconds for it to become responsive. And this drives a lot of people crazy, and that's why there's a lot of bad rep for Bluetooth mice out there. Uh, this mouse actually did exhibit that problem just the same as all the others when I first got it. It was a pretty good delay between when you started moving the mouse and it would start to move again. 
However, uh, one of the first things I did when I got the mouse was update the firmware. If you update the firmware on this mouse, the sleep issue becomes a lot less of a problem. I'm going to leave it sitting for a minute while I talk, and you can see the cursor right here, and I'll show you how minimal that is. However, the trade-off is now that the mouse has a much lower sleep state, uh, it probably has a much higher battery drain. And so that is the next really important thing about a Bluetooth mouse, is how long does the battery last? And really not too good is the answer for the Orochi. Uh, using it every day, five days a week for regular use, just web browsing and stuff like that, my batteries died just short of one month. And they were brand new AA Energizers, so they weren't cheap batteries, they were regular batteries. So they say one to three months battery life, and I got to the shortest spectrum of that. Just one month is all I got out of it before it died. So uh, add on the cost of some rechargeable batteries in a charger or the cost of buying disposable batteries every month or so because it will go through batteries if you're planning on using it in Bluetooth mode often. All right, I actually just moved it again. So real quick, let me talk about the buttons. This is a seven button mouse. There's two on the left side, two on the right side. The left and right click, and the scroll wheel is the seventh button. If you press down on the scroll wheel, there is no left and right tilt on the scroll wheel, and it does not have any kind of hyper scrolling where you can release the friction from the wheel and spin it to scroll quickly. Uh, you can configure the buttons to do certain things inside of the software that comes with the mouse once you install it. Uh, otherwise, these just have the generic forward and back mouse functions, and these have uh, your DPI up and down functions. And if you press down on the scroll wheel, the normal function for that is, is to activate the scroll in your web browser. Uh, on top of the mouse, when you hold it, it has like a rubberized finish, so that's kind of nice. And I like the way it feels in your hand. One thing I don't like about it, the, the buttons are almost recessed. Uh, on the left side, especially, I noticed, because those are the only two buttons you're going to be able to press, you cannot press the buttons on the right side, I'm sorry. With, Normally, you'd have to like actually go and touch them, but while you're using the mouse, you can't press those. Now, the ones on the left side here by, by your thumb, you can press those. Uh, the one closest to you is pretty easy to get, but the one farther away from you is very difficult to press. And they're actually recessed underneath of the plastic uh, left click button here. And so you don't really push on the button so much, just kind of like roll your thumb into it when you're holding the mouse. Now, I would say that these could be designed a lot better than what they are and make them easier to push, but you do adjust to it. Having a month with the mouse now, I can push both buttons on demand without much of a problem. The other thing I like about it is that it uses standardized batteries. It uses two AA batteries. So nothing that you have to go and buy specifically for the mouse. You can replace it with regular batteries. And I like how the lid is held on with magnets. If you pull up on it and it'll come off, and I've got a little bit of trouble here. <laughs> Looks like it actually got stuck on me this time. And there we go. So it reveals the two AA batteries that power the mouse. And there's no clips. It all will just hold back together by magnetism. And that to me is good because that's going to keep the mouse alive longer over a long period of use because clips will eventually uh, give away or possibly break off. So the, the battery life, like I said, only a month on that. So uh, two AA batteries is not a large cost, but it still adds up over time. And um, I'm going to take a look at the bottom here. The way that this mouse glides on the table surface is four Teflon feet located on each corner. It slides pretty good. Uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of friction. It feels just right, so I like that. However, only a month of use, and I rated these feet are showing pretty good wear. Uh, and I've also read uh, reports online that they wear out pretty quickly, so I'm confirming that. That means that you might expect these feet to wear out pretty quickly over the life of the product. So keep that in mind. It uses a laser sensor, so that sensor uh, is, while very sensitive, not really great for every surface. Uh, I noticed that it doesn't like my granite desk and it doesn't like a few other things. So keep that in mind if you're planning on using it in a lot of different places that you might want to pack a mouse pad with it as well. So I'm actually going to wait here for about 10 more seconds so I know this is in sleep. And you can see the cursor right here. 
on that black background. I'm gonna zoom in here if I can. Okay, I'm not gonna get the angle I want, but ready, ready, ready. Start to move. And that took about a half a second, maybe even less than a half a second before my mouse cursor was responsive again. So I just wanted to show you that sleep issue and how not important that really is for this mouse after you've updated the firmware. So that's at least one really good thing about it. So in conclusion, uh, the product cost $80 MSRP, which I honestly feel is too expensive for this product. I, I feel that most Razer products are kind of overpriced because you're paying a lot for the name and the image and not necessarily just the hardware quality. Uh, but I uh, got it anyways, despite that. For one, it was on sale for $50 when I got it. And the other thing is, it's really important. Uh, the market does not have a lot of selection for Bluetooth mice. So if you're looking for a Bluetooth mouse specifically for a certain reason, uh, this is a good option because there's not many other good options out there. Now, you have to think about why you want Bluetooth. The only real reason I can think is because you don't have any more available USB ports. If you still have USB ports open and you don't mind using one, there's a lot of alternatives to this mouse. You can get like the Logitech VX Nano or the VX Regular, they're both pretty great mice. None of them are going to give you that high performance gaming standard uh, that this can give you when you have this wired, but they'll give you longer battery life and they'll do all the same stuff during the Windows type office work when you're not using it wired. So the same wireless performance, uh, but for a much lesser price and longer battery life. So those are good mice to think about. And uh, I think that pretty much covers, I'm looking at my cliff notes, it looks like I got everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, so those are the things that are important to know about the mouse. Think about the size, uh, think about the idea that you have to use it wired or wireless depending on what you're doing. Think about the battery life, think about the cost, think about the hard to press buttons, uh, think about how fast the Teflon feet are wearing out, and once you've evaluated all of those, you can determine whether or not this is worth purchasing. So that's it, guys. If you uh, are already owning one, feel free to key in with your own thoughts. And if you're thinking about buying one, then I hope this was useful to you.